Hey people of the interwebs, it is Q with another scuba diving adventure and this is some very badly filmed footage from a drift dive that I did back four years ago in 2012. A drift dive in the Pumastone Passage. Diving in Caloundra's Pumastone Passage is technically classified as a muck dive, but there's still plenty to see in here, especially if you've got your eyes peeled. When the camouflage is like this, you've really got to know what you're looking for. This decent sized crab looked as though he'd been a victim of an octopus attack. As I turned him over, I could see that he was quite literally gutless. Apart from boaties and scuba divers, the Pumastone Passage also attracts a lot of fishermen. Now, I'm not sure if a fisherman was trying to use this porcupine fish as bait. If he was, that's a pretty dumb idea because no other fish are going to try and eat this thing. For several reasons. When it puffs up to this size, the spines stick outwards and no fish can swallow it. And even if it did manage to swallow it, the porcupine fish is actually toxic, so the fish would die anyway. My dive buddy's original plan was to take the hook out of the fish's mouth and let it go. But the fish wasn't showing too much appreciation and bit him when he put his finger in the fish's mouth. So plan B was just to cut the line as close to the lure as possible and let the fish swim off. On this particular dive in the Pumastone Passage, the visibility wasn't too good, and so there were equal times when we were surprised by fish, and I think the fish were surprised by us. Whenever we're diving, there is a requirement to have a surface marker flag to let boaties and other people know that there are divers down below. And because this day we were diving in a navigational channel, the requirement there is for boats or other surface vehicles to stay at least 30 meters or 100 feet away from the dive flag. When we do hear a boat approaching, it's extremely difficult to pinpoint the direction it's coming from. You only know it's getting closer to you because it gets louder and louder and then eventually fades away. As we moved into a section of the passage that had slightly better visibility and a sandy bottom, we came across this nudibranch. Now, just like regular slugs on land, these are the slugs of the ocean. But this guy didn't appear to be being sluggish this day. He was putting on a pretty good move, probably heading off to somewhere where he could feed, because this sandy bottom is definitely not what he wants to chew down on. On our way back to our exit point, the dive had one more little surprise left in store for us. Our total dive time was 68 minutes with a max depth of 5.2 meters or 17 feet. The water temperature was a very comfortable 23 degrees Celsius, 73.5 Fahrenheit. And the viz around about the four meter mark most of the time, which is 13 feet. I did mention earlier that diving in the Pumastone Passage is technically classified as muck diving and it's not just nature's muck that's in there, a lot of humans throw their muck in there too. This is what a supermarket shopping trolley looks like after it's been in the water for quite some time. Oh, that's just me grabbing a fisherman's lead weight to put in my pocket. And hanging out inside the trolley was another porcupine fish. I love the eyes on these guys. They're just so adorable. 
If you've enjoyed this mini scuba diving adventure with Q and you'd like to see some more, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them down below. As soon as I see them, I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and take it easy.